Hey guys, out for a nice ride. The weather has certainly smiled on my area this weekend. It's February 18, a Saturday, and it was like 55, almost, I don't know, close to 60 today. Sunny the whole day, and it's supposed to be like this tomorrow also. Right smack in the middle of February. It doesn't happen often. So, got out for a nice long ride. I'm down here in Cresco, PA. The point of this vlog today is a little twist on the how did you meet your wife vlog that I think the best 1A started. And I saw some other people do vlogs of that same topic. This is going to be where I met my wife and a little bit of the how as well, but um, I'm heading over to a place called Buck Hill Inn, which was a very large inn built by the Quakers. I'm going to say in the 1800s. Um, it was amazing. It's been closed for almost 30 years now. No one bought it. It's been for sale for a long time. It's just one of those places that will never return to its glory days. The inn itself is huge. I don't know how many rooms it has. It's just this monstrously big inn that was built a long time ago. It was very popular for this Quaker community. It's back in the woods here in the Poconos of Pennsylvania, Pocono Mountains. And someone bought it in the 1980s and added on a modern uh, wing, if you will. And that allowed it to kind of brought it up to spec to be a timeshare type place and my family bought timeshare there when I was a teenager and we used to stay there for one week each year and there was nothing like it um, considering what modern buildings are like and everything to, to be in a place that's over a hundred years old is kind of interesting. Um, I don't think I have much in terms of pictures of what it was like inside, but I can remember, you know, they had this fireplace which was ridiculously big, you know. I could probably park my Harley inside the fireplace. It was that big. And these giant rooms and, you know, like giant, I don't even know what you'd call them. This monstrously big room that had probably about 20 sitting areas. Kind of like picture a typical living room. Now picture like 20 of them. All inside of this one giant room. Anyway, that was like the large sitting area where they had these really big fireplace and the modern part of it had an indoor pool, a lot of the modern stuff, a game room, things like that. The property was giant, you know, I don't even know how many acres, and there was just all kinds of stuff. And, but unfortunately, you know, again, going back to the theme of things changing, you know, the world changed. Um, families, instead of driving three hours out here from New York or Philly, would instead go on an airplane and go to Florida, go to Disney World, you know, something like that. So a place like this just didn't, didn't have the appeal. It couldn't bring in the amount of people needed to bring in. Okay, here we go. Buck Hill Road. Um, you see these stone entrances with the little archways, you know, just very different. 
Um, so anyway, this poor place, I mean, that was a skating rink down there. I think that was a skating rink. I guess it was a stable set. But um, this here was a building that's no longer there. That is the modern wing that they built for the timeshare. And you can see some dozers. It looks like they're finally starting to demolish it. I wondered how long it would stay. I do have some nice pictures I took a couple years ago. But, you know, it's... Um, what you see here is less than half. Let's see if I can get a good spot where you can see this place. What you see here is less than half of how big this place was. It was just ginormous. It went from that end all the way over and you couldn't even see that building there from where I'm at because the main building um, blocked it. Around back there was a putting green. And let's see what I'm able to see. This is where I met my wife. She worked here at the pool, among other things. And um, being able to walk around this place and look in the rooms and wow. You know, there's, you can see by how big it is how much or how many people would have to stay here each week, each week for it to be profitable. Right? And they just couldn't compete with that. You know, they couldn't bring in that kind of numbers. Okay, so I'm going to turn around here and show you something else. So it just, you know, they went bankrupt, the people that owned it. It sat here for a very long time empty. Look how big that place is. Six stories or something. And then eventually this day would come where... The banks or whoever owned it would just say, okay, you know, it's never going to sell, so we just got to take it down. I don't know how much you can see on the video, but you see some sky like glass. That's the pool area there. There was an indoor pool there. And that was pretty much not where I first, yeah, I guess where I first laid eyes on my dear wife. I was a couple months shy of 17 at the time. So, I was not sure if I wanted to come over here today, but I thought, you know what? I'm here, the weather's decent, I should at least check it out. And I had this little fleeting thought in my brain that, you know, one day they're going to tear it down. Well, that day is here. Um, very sad, very sad for me all these years that this place closed down because after we were married and kind of got established in life, um, I would have loved to come back here with my wife for our anniversary. They had an amazing restaurant. Um, when it was operational, it was really first class. But I never had that chance. And that was very sad for me, just to not be able to do that. So anyway, I don't want to get too weepy here, but that was an amazing place at one time. And I met the most amazing, wonderful human being in the whole world, my wife, Brenda. So that will always have a special place in my heart, even though it's not going to be there much longer. It is a little um, bittersweet, maybe that's the word, that, you know, to drive through an area where you used to live so many years later, so much has changed, the past is gone, you know, you have that kind of sadness, but 
know, the, the happy part of it is that my wife and I are together all these years later. So, the best, the best part of the whole thing wasn't the area or the building, it was my sweetheart. And so I have what matters most. So we met there, we wrote letters. This was back at a time when long distance calls were about a dollar a minute. Um, so we didn't talk much. <laughs> but about a year and a half later, we started to date. And we ended up getting married. It would have, you know, not too much longer after that. So that is not only how, but also where I met my wife. So that'll do it for this one. Um, for those guys out there, um, I'll just say this here at the end. Um, I mentioned D-Best 1A at the beginning. Um, he is someone who I've watched his vlogs pretty much early on when I first got interested in biking because, um, well actually I'm going to have a vlog about that later, um, and um, some others that I've been watching, one is NC Stoney down in North Carolina, I found him recently and a lot of his are very interesting, I love his uh, soft tail which is like one of the bikes I drool over, if you haven't seen either of them, check out theirs when you get a chance. Very enjoyable. And I'll mention some others later. That's all guys. I hope everyone else enjoyed a warm, mild weekend like we're having here. Till next time.